Hello, hi everyone. Hello. So uh, <clears throat> my name's Crystal. I'm with the Dog Psychology and Training Center. And today's Facebook Live is going to be covering traveling with your dog. The do's, the don'ts, and everything in between. So uh, we personally are taking our Mastiff, Morgan, uh, to Myrtle Beach with us um, soon for her, uh, hopefully not her last powwow, but she's nine and a half and she's a Neapolitan Mastiff. So we want to make this like a big deal for her. Um, and it's going to be a special time for her. That being said, we can't make it all about her because that would be overwhelming for her. So, uh, that just got me thinking about, you know, the tips and advice that we use ourselves and how that can also benefit you for even younger dogs that are more fit and able to do more. Um, just keep in mind that you're traveling, right? Traveling stressful. It's a good stress, but it's still stressful. Um, and so these tips can help alleviate some of that stress so that everybody, humans and canines both, can have a good time. So my first tip is um, to make sure it's a dog-friendly place. Uh, we love Airbnb. That's our go-to place for traveling, especially with three kids. A hotel room just doesn't cut it. So we need to get a whole place. Um, and a lot of times it's cheaper to do Airbnb than a, even a hotel room without a full kitchenette and beds for everyone. So um, so traveling, we wanted to make sure it was a, a pet friendly place. There was a small um, pet fee um, for the stay. I think it was like $75 for the whole uh, week we're, we're gonna be there, which is fine. Um, I understand the risks being a dog trainer. We know that dogs can be very destructive and can cause a lot of expense. So um, we totally are aware. Um, but then they sent us a list of rules. And when I looked through these rules, I was like, duh, we're gonna do that or we're not gonna do that or that makes sense. But it got me thinking that maybe a lot of other people don't think um, about how different it, it is for a dog in a new place. When we um, when we used to do dog sitting for non-clients, now we only offer dog sitting as an exclusive for our graduates. Um, so we get to see the dog still, um, and then uh, the, the families know that their dog gets a, a good safe place to go to. But when we used to do dog sitting um, for just anyone, it was surprising how many people were just like, oh, my dog's fine out of its crate at home. He doesn't need to be crated in your house. Well, one, you don't know my dogs. None of my dogs would have hurt another dog, but they didn't know that. Like, uh, you don't know how my dogs are going to treat your dog. I don't know how your dog's going to treat my dogs. What if I'm not home and one of the dogs gets mad at each other and they start fighting? I'm not here. Um, what if um, I'm not home and a dog gets caught on something or hurts themselves? I'm not home. How am I going to know this? So um, just being so willy nilly about, oh, my dog does fine at home. He'll be great at your house. Well, I don't think so. It's it's like if you take your kid to a new um, daycare or like an in-home daycare, and even though it's in a home and your kid does pretty good at your home and knows your house rules, they still need to be supervised fairly closely those first few days there to make sure they know like, okay, here's where the restroom is. They don't have accidents. I'm talking toddler aged kids. So hopefully your, your nine year old can find a bathroom. Uh, but dogs have the average IQ of a toddler. So we're talking about toddlers here. So, you, you know, you're going to want them to supervise your kids, um, make sure they have maybe, um, gated areas so that your your kid your toddler cannot fall down their stairs because they didn't know there were stairs there and they were just playing and spinning and then there just happened to be stairs there they just don't know the place so super important um that you bring your dog's crate uh, but anyways i was talking about the rules that they gave us and how i thought they were kind of silly like we were going to follow them anyways why did they feel like they had to remind us and so some of those rules were the dog must be crated when you're not home. Oh yeah, duh. We're going to do that. Um, the dog needs to stay off the furniture. Okay. Uh, Mork is not allowed on my furniture at home, but when we've traveled with our miniature schnauzer who was allowed on the furniture, even though he didn't shed, we still didn't let him get on the furniture. It's just disrespectful. It's not our place. And we don't want him to, obviously when you have a lot of dogs staying at a place over and over there, the wear and tear gets to be pretty extreme. Um, so just respecting that. Just don't let them on the furniture. Um, and there were a few other ones um, that are pretty common sense that we're going to go through um, and, and tell you why it's important, even though that might be a different rule from your house rules. So um, bring their crate. Morgan does not sleep in her crate. She does not go in her crate when we are not home. However, if I could turn this around without making it all shaky, um, she's napping in her crate right now. Um, the door's wide open, but she doesn't have to be in when we're not home or when we're sleeping. We trust her. She knows the rules enough. But she still likes her crate as as that sanctuary, as that feel good place, as that 
peaceful. This is where nothing bad can happen. I'm, I'm safe. So it's our safe, it's our safe place. So bring your crate. And that can be a multitude, um, that can have a lot of multitude of uses along this journey. So you might want to crate your dog to and from. Even if your dog does fine in car rides, it may be a longer car ride. Um, and so just keeping them in their crate, it's their comfortable place. It should be. If your dog has crate anxiety, definitely get that fixed before you travel with your dog. Because if your dog has crate anxiety, he probably has separation anxiety, which means if you leave your dog while you're vacationing at a hotel or an Airbnb, they're going to destroy it and it's going to cost you a lot of money. But more importantly, your dog is going to be terrified. Why travel to a place that's going to make you feel terrified? Get that fixed first. We can teach your dog to like the crate, to love the crate, and to feel peace in the crate. Um, so bring the crate. You can crate your dog to and from. Crate your dog when you're not home. Um, you know, it's optional if you want to leave the dog out at night as long as your dog is safe. But again, being aware you're in a new place. Be mindful. Um, your dog may have to go to the bathroom at night because he went outside before he went to bed, but it was a new place and he didn't know where to pee. And so now he has to pee, but everybody's asleep. And so he's going to pee on the floor. So keep that in mind. We're probably going to crate Morgan the first few nights until we're pretty confident that she knows where the door is. We're, we're, she's pretty consistent about pottying as well as eating and drinking. And we'll get to that in just a second. So use your crates a lot more when you're traveling than you do at home. It's just important. Um, respect the house rules or hotel rules or whatever it is. Um, because one, it's just rude if you don't, but two, you're going to ruin it for the rest of us. You know, it's a privilege to travel with our dogs. And if people keep disrespecting these rules and saying, ah, oh, I don't care. It's just my dog. then eventually they're going to stop having as many dog friendly places to travel with. Um, there's not, a, I mean, there's quite a bit now, but that's, it's not all of the places. Right. Um, and so that, that number is going to keep dwindling down if we keep disrespect, disrespecting those rules. So um, make sure the place is dog friendly, follow all of the rules, respect the space. Don't let them on the furniture. Don't let them on the beds. Um, a little tip that we do is we brush the dogs outside. So um, even if they have a vacuum inside, there's always loose dog hair, right? Like you can never get it all. I mean, I personally can't. If you can, put it in the comments how you do um, because I want to be like you. But I can never clean up all the dog hair. Like as soon as I vacuum, there's another layer of dog hair. It just never ends. So when we brush our dogs, we brush them outside. So all that hair goes outside. The birds can use it for their nests. The wind can blow it away. Obviously, we pick up big chunks. Um, but it just helps the place stay cleaner. Um, another thing, if you're going to a beachy or a dirtier area, so like if you're going to be hiking the mountains or there's sand, um, make sure there's a place you can hose your dog off outside, preferably. Um, because you don't want your dog getting that sand all over the hotel or the Airbnb because it's just disrespectful. Um, so make sure there's a place to hose them off. A lot of beaches have like the little um, hoses right by the beach that you can hose your dog off with. Um, but if you have to, preferably pick them up and take them straight to the tub or walk them straight to the tub and hose them off in there before you let your dog have free reign of the house and get it all dirty, muddy, sandy, whatever. Um, <clears throat> We already talked about anytime you leave, crate them, crate them, crate them, crate them, crate them. Super important. And then um, remember too, it's a new place. It's a little scary, especially if your dog's not used to traveling. If your dog's a well traveler, he's been traveling for years, some of these things may not apply to your dog anymore because he's so used to the rhythm. But if your dog's new to traveling or very young or very old, like Morgan, these rules must be abided um, because it's just easier for younger and older dogs to get stressed, right? I mean, they just, they already got so much going on in their body. Don't add any more to it. So um, it's very common for dogs when they come here for training, um, when we take our dogs anywhere to be boarded um, or to stay with someone, or we travel um, for dogs to do what's called stress fasting, where they may not eat for the first day or two, or maybe even three, but as long as they're drinking water consistently, they're okay. That's just their body saying, I'm not used to this, especially if you're traveling to a different time zone or it's the first time you've ever traveled with your dog. It's just stressful. It's a good stress. It's a happy stress, but it still has that effect on the body, just like getting married, just like moving. Those are very happy moments in life, but on the humans, right? We don't eat as well. Um, our 
our uh, our digestion, our, our gut may not have the normal uh, movements um, that we are used to. Um, you know, it just it alters things that stress does. So so be mindful of your dog. If they're not eating the first few days, that's fine. Don't force them to eat. Their stomach is just not there yet. OK, um, you can try wetting their food with some water. But if they don't want to eat, it's OK as long as they're drinking water. If they're drinking water consistently, they are okay. Um, not to mention that a lot of dogs could use a few lose a few pounds anyway, so it's probably a good thing. Uh, but it's okay if they don't eat because they're just stressed. In a few days, they will start eating. If they don't start eating after that two or three day mark, then we can start wetting their water with some warm food, wetting the water, wetting their food with some warm water, adding some broth to it. Um, Morgan loves carrots. So, um, you know, adding maybe extra carrots to her food because she gets carrots with her dinner every day. Uh, but there's things that you can do to start to stimulate that appetite to get them on a normal rhythm. But also be aware, if they're not eating regularly, then their pottying may not be regular either. So be mindful, again, why the crate is so important to be crating them because their body's gotta get into a new rhythm in this new place. And you don't want them to have an accident when you're not home. Because one, it sucks to clean up doggy accidents. And two, we don't wanna mess up the place we're staying, right? Uh, by the way, you should always travel with um, stain and odor remover. We do. You can get a little spritzer, a little dollar spritzer um, at the dollar store or Walmart, and you can just fill that up with stain and odor remover. And we take that with us when we travel with our dogs because there's always a chance for an accident. Morgan doesn't have accidents anymore. She's nine and a half, but we're in a new place. She might. So just being prepared. Um, so stress fat fasting, as long as they're drinking water, it's okay. Um, and then make sure they get proper rest. So if it's the summertime or a warmer time or climate or your dog is traveling um, from a very cold climate to a hot climate, they their body is going to need time to adjust. And middle of the day is probably going to be too much. Okay. Dogs get much hotter than we do. Um, so for them, for Morgan, she, her beach time is going to be from um, or before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m. In between that, she's going to be crated most of that time. We're obviously going to go home for lunch, let her out and play with her and things like that. But she's going to be crated most of that time, not because it's mean, not because it's cruel, but one, it's way too hot for a Neapolitan Mastiff to be outside. Two, she needs that rest. That's her time to just get to her Zen place, to recalibrate and be ready to come back out in the evening. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're like me. I actually like to nap on vacation one because I don't get a nap very much at home but two it's stressful right it's sometimes more stressful for parents traveling with kids um, to go on a vacation because we have more worries right our kids are in unfamiliar places they're more likely to get lost or to wonder because they're so awestruck by the sights um, so stressful so napping's good for dogs and humans um, make sure here's a little bonus tip for you guys something we just do instinctively, but some of you might, um, it might be an oversight for you because you just don't think about it. Make sure your dog's collar is tightened, okay? Because dog's collars naturally loosen over time. They stretch. Um, if it's a plastic little, um, I don't want to call it like a, not a buckle, but you know, the little sliding thing. Um, it's, it's common for them to just start to get looser and looser and looser. And when your dog's in a new place, there's, it's more startling, more frightening, and more likely for them to try to pull away from something. The collar slips off and then your dog bolts. And because you're not in your hometown, the chances of finding your dog go way down. Okay, so make sure that collar is is tightened. Okay, two fingers. That's all you should be able to get through there. If you can get your whole hand through, way too loose. Two fingers that you want to kind of wiggle in there. Okay, if you can just slide them in willy nilly, way too loose. You want to be able to snugly fit two fingers in there um, on their collar to make sure it's super super tight. Um, and then the last one, it might be hard for some of you, probably most of you, especially because we have such an attractive dog. Morgan's the best, okay? She's glorious, she's majestic, and everybody wants to touch her. And usually, Morgan wants everyone to touch her. She is our outgoing social butterfly dog. However, when we're traveling, we're gonna allow, we're not going to allow people to pet her. We're gonna keep that physical touch to a min minimum. Um, we're gonna be able to pet her. We're actually traveling to meet some family members, so they're gonna be able to pet her because she knows them, she's comfortable with them. But strangers, okay, she's already stressed. 
She may be stressed fasting. She may not be eating well those first couple of days because it's a new place. And even when she starts eating, she may not be eating her normal amount. Um, it may not be at the normal time she eats because we're vacationing, right? So there's some flexibility in there. Um, and so, you know, it's just a stressful time. So having more people fondle her and reach for her, it's just, it just adds on more stress. So I'm going to keep her stressed to the bare minimum that I can. I can control that. I am her owner. And if somebody asks to pet her, even though she's so beautiful and she's so majestic, I'm going to say, oh, thanks, but not right now. Um, she's in a new place and she's a little stressed. So we're just not going to let anybody pet her for, for today or tomorrow or whatever. Um, you don't have to be rude about it, but you, you do have to be firm. This is your dog. She's your responsibility. And it's your right to stand up for her and say, nah, not right now. Thanks, though. Um, so don't let them pet her. Also be aware, um, you know, I talk about stress fasting. There's also going to be new smells, new sights, um, new temperatures, new barometric pressures. Um, if you're by the beach, that sandy or the, the salty air, all of this is going to be new and distracting and overwhelming for your dog in a happy, good way. But still, it's just adding to that stress level. So another reason why you shouldn't let strangers come up and pet and fondle your dog. Um, another thing to keep in mind is... I mentioned she may not be eating well, but she may not be sleeping well either, right? We're in a new place. I don't know what kind of sounds are going to be outside of our Airbnb at night. Um, you know, there's been a couple times that we've been close to like, a, uh, I don't know, maybe it was another Airbnb, but like they were like the party house. Okay. And they have music playing like all night really loud. And so luckily it was just me and my husband, but we didn't sleep very well. If we would have had our kids and our dog, that's just another stressor for them. Um, so she may not be sleeping well. She may not be eating well, um, and all of that is normal because you're in a new place, but be mindful that you can control the amount of stress that your dog is, is exposed to, to an extent, right? You can't control all the stressors. Obviously, traveling is a stressor in and of itself, but having other people touch your dog, taking her to a billion places, um, you know, we're being very controlled about Morgan's outings, and we may not even do two outings a day. She may go to the beach one morning, and then not that evening, but then the next day, maybe go to the beach that evening. Um, you know, and so just keeping an eye on her, reading her, see what she wants to do, and when we're out and about, being mindful that we might have to turn on a dime and take her back home because she's got, starting to get stressed. Morgan's not an aggressive dog, but that doesn't mean that she's not going to get uncomfortable and start to get a little frumpy, right? We all do. I'm a nice person, but when I'm stressed, I have a very short fuse, right? I start to just kind of snap at people and burk at people. Dogs are the same way. So I'm not going to let her get to that point because I can watch her, I can read her, and I can control the stresses that she's exposed to. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any other travel tips that you do that I did not mention, please add them to the comments because we're always learning um, as well. If you have a question about something I said or a question about something maybe I didn't say, but you're not sure if it's a good travel tip, put it in the comments. I'd love to discuss it with you. Um, and if you like this Facebook Live or you know someone it can benefit, please share it on your page. Um, we do these because we want to help as many people as possible, but we can only do that with your help. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you guys next Thursday um, on our Facebook Live. And you guys have a wonderful, happy Thursday. Bye, everyone. See ya.